paddle mats are great. They are flexible, modular by design, and are easily rolled up to store away or swap out if needed. One thing that bugged me about the mats you can buy commercially is that they're just perfectly flat surfaces with a design printed on them. They have no texture, no 3D detail. I wanted something more detailed for my Warhammer 40,000 table while still keeping the desired properties of a flexible mat. So that's what I set out to do. I'm going to show you the journey of exploration it took to get to the end result, as well as some pitfalls and issues I had along the way. I'll also be showing you some alternatives if you want to improve the build, if you want to attempt this yourself. Oh yeah, and we'll be setting up a full table loaded with terrain as well. I had made an acrylic mat a couple of months back, and the material was going to be my start for this one as well. Lots of other crafters have tackled this type of build starting with a painter's drop cloth, so we'll start with that here as well. Since I didn't quite know how well some of my ideas would work, I cleverly made a one foot by one foot test piece to go alongside the four by six mat as well. Some of the main things I wanted were wires, metal paddling, and mesh or graded texture. Some of the problems with any materials used on a flexible mat like this uh, is that they also need to be flexible, ironically. And the adhesive used needs to stretch and bend with the material as not to peel the things that you've glued down. Figured wires would be a good try since they are quite flexible on their own. To stick them down, I used some kitchen and bath clear silicone. This proved to be a huge mistake since in the painting phase, nothing sticks to this stuff. They also made my mat a lot less flexible. Once I added enough of them, I think the, the metal in them is just too rigid. Then I tried stamping some of the paneling onto the acrylic. This also ended up being a pretty bad idea. The stamps I made just ended up smudging the acrylic and this would be hard to get consistent across a large board. Doubt was starting to set in. Acrylic caulk is a terrible glue, so the details I cut out to go on top, just peeled right off. That left me with thin EVA foam for simulating my metal plating. EVA is flexible, easily detailed, exacto knife and a heat gun, and takes paint really, really well. For the mesh texture, this was an easy choice, and I resorted to the trusty drywall mesh tape. Satisfied with the lessons learned, I decided to continue on and sketched out an overall design onto a 4x6 drop cloth. This was just done with a sharpie and a large ruler. This type of ruler is used for cutting and measuring sheets of drywall. It has an edge that is exactly 4 feet long and it rests square when placed along the side. It's perfect for 8x4 sheets of drywall. Starting with the conduit details, I cut out thin strips of EVA to simulate my wires. These would be easier to work with than the wires themselves. And I'm using contact cement for sticking these down as they are the thinnest pieces and I really wanted to make sure they had a good bond. Applying a coat onto each surface and then waiting 15 minutes as it says on the can. You can then just touch the surfaces together and they form an instant bond. If you've never used contact cement before, make sure you work in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask. The fumes are quite potent. I stuck a fan in the window nearby and opened another window to create a draft. I did end up using some acrylic caulk mixed with latex paint on the mat, since I wanted to get a different texture on parts of it. This can represent poured concrete. I masked off the areas that I wanted the concrete to go on and quickly spread some using a taping knife. I think I only ended up using about a tube of this on the whole board, but the effect was good. I drew in these marks every three inches to add some detail. Make sure you peel off the masking tape before the caulking dries to get a very clean, crisp edge. The EVA paneling took by far the most time. That was the other reason I chose to cover large parts of the board with acrylic caulk and mesh tape, since that would cut down the surface area I needed to panel dramatically. I picked up this pack from the craft store. I think it came in a pack of 12, and it was around 15 bucks. I only ended up using around eight or nine sheets of it, so this was good value. Tried to get some variation in size of the panels and just marked and cut it on the spot. No need to get really precise here. If you're enjoying how many colors this EVA foam comes in, hit the like button. If you hate the rainbow, hit the dislike button. 
In either case, please subscribe as I've got loads more content on my channel and that's going to let YouTube know you want to see my videos suggested to you in the future. To stick this all down, I'll be using hot glue for the most part. It's not as strong as the contact cement we used earlier, but it's a lot easier and faster to apply, so I took the trade off here. I did have several corners not fully stuck down, but it was easy enough to spot fix with more hot glue and squish them down. Well, you thought we were done with the panels? Wrong. Now we can inscribe some details on them. Grab a very sharp X-Acto blade and swap this often. Start cutting in a sci-fi looking patterns. I chose to go with a two inch grid pattern and then I broke it up with some angled section. Tried to get in lots of little vents and cross patterns in various parts. If you have a screwdriver with some of these attachable bits, some of them make very interesting looking rivets or other kind of sci-fi detail. Once I was happy with all the carving, I used a heat gun to bring out all the detail. This shrinks the AVA foam surface and cauterizes it, revealing all the little lines that were cut out. Awesome. Did I mention this took a while? I think I probably spent a full evening cutting out metal panel details. Well worth it though, and let me catch up on some podcasts as well. Instead of using acrylic paint, I base coated the whole board in this dark blue latex paint. My wife will recognize this as the color of our bedroom accent wall from when we painted last year. This is a magnitude cheaper than craft paint. I think I used about half a quart on the board. And the blue is also a good match for the overall look I wanted, so it makes a great base coat. You can get house paint in a million different colors, so you can just buy a quart and get it tinted if you want something specific. For the rest of my paint scheme, I went with some dark blue, almost black on the edges. And then came in with a bit of a lighter dark blue for all the panels, the middle parts. All the pipes got a coat of green. In my universe, all the pipes are colored green. This is known. For the mesh grating, I base coated in a chocolate brown, but I didn't bother going for full coverage near the edges. To get some of the panels to pop, I came in with a tan dry brush in the center of each 2x2 detail I carved out. This gives the panel a lot more dimension, as if the edges have gathered a lot of grime or dust over the years, and the middle parts have worn away and shown brightly. Some panels also got a light red or pink dry brush to simulate different lighting conditions I might have. I busted out this ketchup bottle of burnt umber wash and made sure to get in all the edges or places that would gather the most grime or that should look darker. To give some detail to the mesh, I added these light gray lines with some masking tape. They almost make these sections look like some sort of roads or paths on a factory floor. Using some random 3D printed objects I had, I added some stenciled patterns to part of it. For more detail and to make sure this mat can be used for Necromunda, I added the bare minimum number of hazard striping to a few areas. I also wanted to shout out the newest member of my Patreon for their support. If you want to support the channel and get some behind the scenes posts and shoutouts like this one, then go ahead and take a look at the link in the description and check out some of the tiers I set up. For further weathering, I added very watered down brown to large sections of the board and then sponged some of it off with a paper towel. Using a really beat up brush, I speckled some dry orange red patterns across the panels as well. With everything dried up, give the whole board a coat of matte sealer to protect that paint job from wear and tear. I'll probably do another few coats in a couple days. I was really nervous for this moment. I removed all the staples holding the mat down and gingerly started moving the mat around. It's quite flexible. More flexible than I would have expected from my test mat. I had less acrylic on this one, so maybe that's why. It also rolls up nicely into a good diameter for storage, and none of the EVA panels are falling off or getting wrinkled. Nice. To get this to its final desired shape, I just used a normal pair of scissors. Nothing fancy. Alright, let's put some terrain on this thing and just bask in its glory. I hope this has inspired you to go make your own super detailed futuristic battle map.